evening. This is the West Division Contest. <coughs> we'll be having two contests tonight. We'll be having the Table Topics Contest, and we'll be having the International Speech Contest. We have four contestants in the Table, Cop in the table Topics Contest, and we have five contestants in the International Speech Contest. To start things off, we will have an invocation given by our district governor, Donna Weston. Our Northeast Division Governor, 
the classy and clever Kathy Stroh. <laughs> Our very own West Division Governor, the funny and fantastic Frank Hessel. <laughs> Not to be outdone, we have several high quality and distinguished area governors in our midst this evening. We have our West 71 area governor, the composed and clever Calvin Gibbs. the West 72 area governor, the magnificent Mike Bain. And we have the West 74 area governor, the responsible and regal Robert Perry. And finally, we also have in our midst a past district governor, Mr. Keith Essence. Now, on the account of being human, I am prone to mistakes. Have I missed any dignitaries of any kind, past or present? Thank you. Many of you know that this contest is being videotaped. And as many of you can tell, we have an ambient noise. We have a large room. Contestants, to be recorded, please make sure you project your voice well. Now, for those of you that have never visited one of these before, we have a very strict way of making sure that we have covered all of our bases, dotted our I's, crossed our T's, and this is the disclaimer that I always begin with. Contestants, timers, ballot counters, sergeant at arms, everyone has been briefed prior to the beginning of this contest. Everyone is aware of the Toastmasters international rules that govern this contest. No one should enter or leave the room during the contestants' presentations. You may do so if time permits between, during the minute of silence between each presentation or after the last presenter. Thank you. And with that said, let the contest begin. I am now going to share with you the speaking order of our Table of Topics contestants. Table Topics contestant number one, Tom Yakovich. Tom Yakovich, contestant, Table Topics contestant number one. <clears throat> table Topics contestant number two, Matt Shavers. Matt Shavers, Table Topics contestant number two. Table Topics contestant number three, Ryan Lawrence. Ryan Lawrence, Table Topics contestant number three. Table Topics contestant number four, Carl Facing. Carl Facing, Table Topics contestant number four. Sergeant at Arms, please escort all our Table Topics contestants out of the room except our first contestant. May our first contestant please assist, join the other Sergeant at Arms at the back of the room. Table Topics Contest. There will be one minute of silence between each contestant. Timekeepers, when I signal you, please add one minute to the clock and let me know or signal me with the green light when that one minute is done. This will give our judges all the time they'll need to complete their baskets. <coughs> Table Topics Contestant number one, Tom Yakovich. 
The motto of Toastmasters is where leaders are made. What does this mean to you? The motto of Toastmasters is where leaders are made. What does this mean to you? Tom Yakovich. Fellow Toastmasters, it's an age-old question. Does the leader make the office, or does the office make the man or the leader? And Toastmasters, I question that. We in our club have done seminars on John C. Maxwell, so I guess I'm sort of a follower of John C. He's also in the Toastmasters supply book, so I know Toastmasters follows what he has to say. But I was very surprised when I heard of our new motto. I don't believe it's in totally in line with John C. Maxwell. His law of leadership says that the man makes the office. There, it's irrefutable. So the office doesn't make the man. And in that sense, Toastmasters is saying that the office is making the person. And in some ways, we do that by coaching. I'm not saying we don't learn from others in Toastmasters. I'm saying that when we enter our offices in Toastmasters as leaders, that we are the office. I've learned a lot from many, many depths of Toastmaster leaders, past district governors, division governors, and area governors, et cetera, here, including those who haven't even taken office in Toastmasters. I've met many people who have given me insights into things and areas that I, I had never thought of. However, when I picked up the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership by John Maxwell and the 15 Laws of Growth by John Maxwell, I really saw how he focused on those specific topics. So I actually was very surprised that they use where leaders are made. I can understand where leaders grow. I can understand where leaders develop. I just don't understand how they are made or created in a thin toast <coughs> Table Topics contestant number two, Matt Shavers. The motto of Toastmasters is where leaders are made. What does this mean to you? The motto of Toastmasters is where leaders are made. What does this mean to you? Matt Shavers. Martin Luther King Jr., George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, 
When we think of great leaders, these are just some people that come to mind. Toastmasters model, where leaders are made. What does that mean to me? Mr. Contest Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and welcome guests. Where leaders are made. Some people say that leaders are born, but I believe that leaders can be made. We here at Toastmasters get to experience leadership every time we get together. Where else can you go and become the club president within the first six months of being a Toastmaster? <laughs> <laughs> yes, folks, that was my experience. <laughs> I was club president, had no idea what I was getting into, but we were a newly formed club, and I took the challenge of taking on a leadership role, not knowing what that responsibility really meant to me. But I progressed. I went on from being a club president, getting into Toastmasters just for the thrill of honing some skills, to suddenly becoming an area governor. How did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> then went from area governor to a whole nother level that I didn't expect, district treasurer. Wow, two-year term. <laughs> I did the full limit. <laughs> Folks, Toastmasters is an excellent example of where leaders are made. You don't have to have skills to start being leadership. We have a leadership track that helps develop leaders. We have communication track that gives you the skills to take that leadership to a new level. Toastmasters is something that every leader can have, every person that desires to be a leader. You don't have to be Abraham Lincoln. You don't have to be Martin Luther King Jr. You don't have to be George Washington. You can lead whatever organization, whatever part of your life you want to lead. But Toastmasters is where leaders are made. Table Topics contestant number three, Ryan Lawrence. The motto of Toastmasters is where leaders are made. What does this mean to you? The motto of Toastmasters is where leaders are made. What does this mean to you, Ryan Lawrence? Toastmaster. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ryan Lawrence, and tonight I'm going to tell you a story about my journey to Toastmasters. It's a three-point process, and it's pretty interesting because it's a path to leadership that I'm very excited to be on. When I was a child, I was a very awkward and clumsy child. I was very shy, and I was petrified of speaking in front of other people. I learned how to be more confident by pursuing things that were challenging to me. One of those things was pursuing magic and sleight of hand. It gave me confidence talking in front of other people. And since I had small motor skills and was clumsy as prescribed by the doctor, it gave me a chance to work on something that I wasn't very good at. When I got into high school, I decided to pursue theater. I became a thespian and I started acting. Several years later, tried to get a corporate job as an actor, and I ended up using my acting degree doing a lot of sales and marketing. <laughs> <laughs> In 
In the sales and marketing process, I started to realize that I needed to speak frequently for my job. And in spite of all the experience I had performing sleight of hand for other people, doing magic and performing plays, I was terrible at speaking to people in the boardroom. Don't even get me started about speaking on a teleconference. Then we're in deep trouble. So then I had a friend, a magic friend, tell me about Toastmasters. And this is a pretty significant friend. His name is Michael Amar. He's one of the greatest magicians in the country. He's actually a consultant for David Copperfield. And he said, Brian, I use Toastmasters to become a better speaker in my magic performances. You should use this for the boardroom. So I joined my local area chapter, and now I'm in Toastmasters. And it's given me three leadership skills. First, it's given me an opportunity to network with other professionals. Second, it's given me an opportunity to work on speaking skills through the Competent Communication Manual. And so far, I've only gotten through one, <laughs> the icebreaker. Lastly, it's given me an opportunity to be confident in myself. And I really feel like this has been a great experience for me. Thank you for your time. Mr. Contest, Toastmaster, back to you. Table Topics contestant number four, Carl Faison. The motto of Toastmasters is, where leaders are made. What does this mean to you? The motto of Toastmasters is, where leaders are made. What does this mean to you, Carl Faison? fellow Toastmasters and guests. How appropriate that a question should be chosen from our very own motto, where leaders are made. To me, the importance of this is communication. Good leaders must communicate. You can't lead if those who are expected to follow you don't know what it is they need to know, that connection from your mind to theirs. And the true benefit of Toastmasters is the way it improves and develops the basic communication skills. I still think that the 10 speeches and the way they're structured to get the CC is absolute genius. Each speech, the first speech is a little shorter. The next one builds on it. You add skill sets as you go. Just the beauty of and simplicity of that program amazes me every time I watch a member go through that progression of speeches. At the same time, you learn leadership through the CL manual, and you learn how to handle different roles, basically manage a job or a function within a Toastmaster meeting. Toastmasters truly is where leaders are made. Mr. Toastmaster. Everyone please remain 
silent while the judges complete the ballots and the ballot counters.
And then we have a few people sign up. We have some magicians and some dancers, and I'm not sure what else. So if you have a talent that you would like to show the district, you can sign up for that. And after the contest, we actually are going to have music by Power Play, dancing and singing and music afterwards. Now, how many people will have earned an edu educational award by April 15th? All you have to do is come at 7 a.m. on Saturday morning and you get a free hot breakfast. <laughs> Can't be that. <coughs> then we have opening ceremonies. How many people have heard of Wayne Mesmer? He is coming and singing the national anthem after we have a color guard. That's so how we're opening up um, our opening ceremonies. And before that, we're having the banner parade. So anybody that wants to get your group together and parade in and get announced, we're going to be uh, announcing the uh, clubs and your banners. Then after that, after we have opening ceremonies, we have our business meeting. And so it is very important if you are a president or a vice president of education that you come because your votes are important. We need a quorum. We're voting on district leaders. You see some of them that are running up here, as well as the alignment for the next year. So those are a couple of things that we need to vote on. After that, we're going to have lunch. We're going to have some awards. The international contest, I think, is starting at 3 o'clock. Then after that, we're going to have dinner and other awards. We have a couple of keynote speakers. Cheryl Roush, anybody ever heard of her? She is an author, a coach, and of course a professional speaker. We also have our international director. We sit on the board of directors. Alan Shader, he's going to be at our conference and he's going to be uh, giving a couple of speeches. So right now, I think up till April, well, the next two days of April, is the early bird special. Your entire club can come for $125. I mean, where can you go and get all that excitement Friday night and all day Saturday? So I hope to see all of you there. Ladies and gentlemen, it is 8 o'clock sharp, and we will have now a 10-minute inter intermission. Please help yourself to the refreshments. Walk over to the side where the flyers are. Engage. Use the facilities. Timers, if I can please have 10 minutes on the clock. And intermission, go.